Hi, welcome to Wooden Stuff Workshop on a very chilly morning. I'm just trying to uh, thaw out a bit. So as soon as I've thawed out, we've got some jobs to get on with in the workshop. So see you in a second. First off, I'm going to uh, address a bit of an issue with my jig. I did have some viewers mention it looked a bit dangerous where the saw blade was coming through the jig because uh, it does come towards your hand because you're ha holding the handle there and the saw blade's there. But when I did make this and when I was using it on the last video, I was actually watching the saw blade come along the uh, come along the slot there and I was stopping well before my hand. As you see, the uh, slot only goes to there anyway. That was in my mind as well. I could see that my hand was in line with the blade. But, uh, so yeah, that was a good point that was being brought up. So I'm going to address that anyway. And what I thought I'd do, I'd stick a hardwood block on this side just so that if I hit it, I'd see the blade hit it and it would uh, take a while cutting through. But even better than that, I'm going to glue and screw this piece of maple onto there to make a higher handle so that even if I cut all the way through, the blade won't touch my hand, it would go straight under. So for a start, let's just take the corners off there, make it look a bit better. And then we'll uh, just attach it on there. Let's get this on here and then that's this job done and we can get on and do something else. That's made it safer, let me show you. So we've got this bit of wood screwed on. So now, when I hold this as my handle, my fingers, it's that high that your fingers can't go anywhere down where the blade would be. But as I say, I stopped the blade before, uh, right back here anyway. But this is just a bit of extra. So that'll uh, keep my hand well away from that. That'll work a treat. So let's get on with the next job. So I was watching uh, one of the YouTube channels I follow the other day, uh, Worth the Effort Woodworking. He was making a sharpening bed. So uh, what I did, I went to work and I made one at work for because I work at a school, I'm a DT technician. So I'm always having to sharpen all the chisels and the planes and such like at school. So I thought I'd make a similar sort of thing to what he was making on his channel. He's, he made a base that was wood and then sat the uh, slab or tile into the wood. But he was having, he took out notches where you could put in your chisel to uh, set up the angle for using with the jig. All I've done is make marks on the bed like this so you can set the chisel in the guide. Same with the planer blade. I 
made one at work and I'd already I made this while I was there doing that one so I'm just going to glue some leather here on the back of on the back of this piece that I've got here so whenever I uh, chuck a settee or anything away and the leather I usually cut off the leather and then just keep it if I need it so there's a nice piece of leather here I'm going to glue some leather on here so we can use it for stropping. So we can take the uh, burr off the edge of the chisels. I'm going to take off, give that a quick roughing over. Bit of a pencil mark around there so I know where I'm putting the other contact adhesive. Just need a thin layer of uh, contact adhesive on both pieces. Let's let them get tacky and then we'll stick them together. got these sticky feet I think I'll stick these on my tile some clamps on that the job lovely this is what I need to sort out next for my daughter let me show you what this used to look like so it's finished as antique pine but my daughter wanted it darker so uh, and I knew that was going to be a bit of a challenge because it was all waxed antique waxed so I tried to sand off the wax and uh, try and stain it darker but in the end it got really messy like the build up and everything so I've been trying to fetch it off that's where I got to and it looked awful because this is uh, now waxed again to I was trying to see if I could make it look any better but uh, now I think it looks nasty so I've got to be careful trying to fetch all this off and I was trying to figure a way of getting it off. It's got all these leather bits on because this is how I used to make uh, used to make the boxes. They were bigger and they had leather bits on here. These metal catches and the hinges were like this. I had uh, dowels running in through the ends there. But that's how they used to be. But I'm trying to get off this nasty colouring, so that's what I'm on with now. What I've read up is the, a good way of getting wax off old pine and stuff and old wood is using wire wool and white spirit. See if I can find some white spirit in the safe where I keep my flammables and uh, hopefully we can try and get some of this off. Yep, thought I had some. White spirit. And some wire wool. Let's see if I can rescue this box. Because it's a mess. But what I'll do, I'll put you on time lapse, which means you don't have to watch all the boring stuff. And I can listen to some music. So let's get on. Right, I'm 
nearly there. So I've done, got a load off the top, that end, that side and the back. So just this side. Just getting rid of all the bits of wire wool with that. Right, let's give it a bit of a sand. decided to risk it again this is walnut staining here and I'm just gonna wipe a thin layer on and wipe it off just uh, see if we can just make it a little bit darker I think I'll start start on the back first let's see what happens Couldn't find any gloves, so I've got a glove. I have actually got some probably somewhere in the house. But that looks like it might be going on nice and even though. seems to have gone on a bit more uniform so that's okay I'll leave that now to dry and then I'll come back and we'll give it a clear wax in this stains had plenty of time to dry so uh, it's still pretty smooth so I won't have to denib it I'm gonna use this clear paste this clear paste wax, it's from Axminster, Axminster Tools. A bit short of rags at the minute, but uh, so I'll just use paper towel. I'll just wipe it on and leave it for a while for a start.
Right, I'm going to have to go and see if I can find a uh, cloth or a rag somewhere so I can give this a really good buffing up. What I need on here is some elbow grease to buff it all up. It's getting a bit chilly in here again now because I've accidentally let the fire go out. And it's snowing outside. go I think I've managed to rescue that looks okay now so yeah my daughter can have that back again now but uh, yeah it's pretty nice finish on it the more it's handled the more it'll buff up looks better than the state it was in before that I managed to get it in this is uh, not bad so I just recently bought this Parkside router from Lidl and I bought this because uh, some of you might have noticed that on my um, router table that I improved by making a lift for it the router that's in there is just a really old power devil one you know so they were really cheap and they're really old so I'm surprising it's still going but uh, yeah that's all that's in there so I thought I better get another router that I'm able to fix to that uh, table. Because like my big Bosch one that I've got in there in the metal cupboards, that's too big to fit under there. So I bought this one. So let's have a look. This is a router, uh, Parkside router. My eyesight's getting worse. POF 1200D3. It was only... 29 pounds something or other so I bought that obviously we're buying on a budget so uh, it's all pretty cheap stuff and then the other thing that I bought is this the um, I had a belt sander the splined wheel that drove the belt in the belt sander was cast a bit dodgy and it had a hole in it and it kept cutting the belts making them snap but the sander was getting unbelievably hot as well anyway so I chucked that and I bought this so this is a really cheap one cheapest I could find on the internet because uh, like I've seen somebody else say before what you want to do if the tools you don't use very often just buy a cheap one see if you'll use it a lot and then if you do invest in a better one but I don't use a hand belt sander very often. But just because my other one had died, I thought I'd better get one just to have. So, this is called a T-Tock. Uh, T-Tock belt sander. That's what it's got on there, labelled up. They're probably labelled up as... Uh, with a lot of different names. But you'll see loads of these on the internet at the minute. And these, this was only 34 pound something or other I got this for. So it's big compared to my other ones, big and heavy. But I've got no problem with that. Get your dr uh, dust collector there. That just fits on the side there. And uh, also with this, you get some clamps so you can mount it you can tip it upside down and mount it to a bench so you can use it 
like a bench belt sander and put things on it. Uh, it's S1TE DU08-75 and uh, yeah so it's I'll give it a quick go and it works okay for now but we'll have to see the belt size is 75 by 533 on this and like I say it's 900 watt 230 volt it's got a comfy grip there and it's got it's also got let's get that off it's all got uh, so got variable speed on there so you can make it run a bit slower if you like which is quite handy but yeah I'll have to see how it goes long term but thought I'd better have one in just in case I need it so yeah two cheap budget tools to add to the collection of other budget tools but if they get the job done then that's okay well to tell you the truth I'm freezing my knickknacks off on here because I've let the fire go out like a plonker so I think I'm going to call that it for today. So thanks a lot for watching. Take care.